Welcome to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Being your own loud is not new to marketing, but the mindset, strategies, and resources to help you get there are evolving faster than this industry is keeping up. It is time to find a new perspective on what works why and how to move your business forward. Listen as I interview guests to help you learn from them how to be your own loud. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Haller. And now we have had a couple of people who've lived in the world of real estate previously, uh, but nobody really to the level of our guest today. And for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first reason is, is because her podcast is astronomically humongous. Uh, millions, tens, I'm sorry. No, one wrong one, zero. Hundreds of millions of downloads, uh, which is unbelievably amazing. Uh, and it's really all about the content and her community, which is really, really important. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about podcasting, but also that she teaches people how to be more financially independent. Now, she does it through some real estate stuff, which we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but I'm really excited to have Liz. Liz, welcome to the show. And uh, thanks for being here. Matt, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate uh, you know having me on as a guest. And I enjoyed our conversation we had uh, about a month ago. So thank you. Yeah. So did I get that right? It's over a hundred million, right? We're yeah. So we're part of the Bigger Pockets um, family of podcasts, and yes, collectively, uh, it's, it's it's actually our, between our podcast and I think three other ones that we're 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 you know have the top real estate investing podcasts out there. So yeah, it's pretty neat to be part of that family of, of podcasts. Yeah. Well, before we get into why in God's name did you start a podcast, <laughs> tell us a little bit more about yourself, because I had such a great time talking to you during our pre-call. We blew through time super fast. Uh, so tell our audience a little bit about who you are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it started when I was born. Now I won't go back that far. Um, but I, I grew up in uh, New Jersey, so I am a true and true Jersey girl. I live in Pennsylvania now, but uh, I am married. I have two little kids. Um, yeah, so I loved learning about people. I was a psych major. I went and got my degree right after in social work. So I want, I got my master's degree in social work, wanted to counsel people and counsel women in particular. I wrote a business plan. I wanted to serve women. And at the same time, my brother-in-law uh, was into personal growth. Only entrepreneur I knew. My family, my dad's a teacher. My mom worked part-time. So I didn't know any entrepreneurs, didn't even know that as a career path, so to speak. Um, and he handed me Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, little purple book. And that completely opened my eyes to passive income and having money work for me. And you could do that through investments. And it's just like this, it was almost like learning a whole new language uh, as a 23 year old. So at that point, I actually um, started, I actually shifted and said, I want to get a job in sales, because one of the things he talks about is getting a job in sales, getting a job as, you know, as, as that type of uh, line of business. And I loved helping people, but I knew to help people, I need to do some things differently. So I actually ended up not getting a traditional social work a job. And I ended up getting a job more in corporate in consulting and sales. Same time I met my now husband and we started uh, learning about real estate investing. We knew nothing, had no money really. So again, those are really not great, great characteristics for building an empire, but we were young and hungry and worked really hard and took a bunch of courses at the local RIA meetings, the local real estate investing meetings. And we bought our first investment property uh, in our early twenties, which is a duplex outside of Philadelphia. My father loaned us the 30,000 we needed, and that kind of got us going in that path. And simultaneously, my husband quit his job. We ended up growing our, our portfolio. Now we're mostly, uh, we have managed and own over a thousand units in um, four states. But it wasn't a linear road. You know, there was a lot of ups, downs, twists, turns, mistakes, you know, all everything in between. But we got our start in investing and grew our business that way. And a few years ago, started the Real Estate Invest Her community uh, for women in real estate investing. Uh, because we kind of, my partner and I, Andres and I saw the need and said, you know, where's the women in this business? We'd go to conferences, we'd go to meetups, we'd go to wherever. And it was almost like, oh, you're here with your husband? Um, and I'm like, no, actually, I got my husband involved in real estate investing. So anyway, long story short, we both have this passion to empower women in particular in this business. And the more we've gotten involved four years later, the more of a need there actually is. So uh, we have community meetups across the country, 53, and a uh, growing um, you know, platform for women. Well, when we had talked originally, um, 
we experience the same thing in financial services, right? You walk in and it's a sea of old white guys, right? It's not, there's no real diversity. There's no real inclusion and there's no real representation of 51% of the population, right? Which, which doesn't make a lot of sense. And because of that, uh, you and I talked about previously, a lot of women don't see themselves in this role, which is why this whole invest with her things, all the meetups that you guys do is so incredibly powerful. Now, why in the heck did you start a podcast? Uh, I mean, right. That doesn't, I mean, you guys, had already, you know, I'm air quoting here, kind of made it as is real estate pros. Uh, why was the podcast your one of your chosen means of getting your voice out in the marketplace? You know, it's interesting. I, I think sometimes there are, are there's accidents, and then there's sometimes a very intentional reason we do things. So the podcast was actually very intentional. And Andres and I, uh, my partner and I, uh, had started a mastermind of women. There's like five of us on Skype. We were using Skype long before uh, Zoom. And uh, her and I had this, both this shared passion. We said, okay, what do we start with? We want to do something to bring women together. And the podcast was a very intentional starting point. So we said, we both individually answered a bu bunch of questions, uh, Matt, about uh, kind of top moments of our lives. Um, those moments that bring us the most joy that we have passion. It wasn't like, should we start a podcast? And this is the right strategic move. Those were not the first questions we answered. And when, whenever people ask me, should I start a podcast? Um, you know, it's a big loaded question. I'm sure Matt, you get that all the time. And it's, it's not as simple as yes or no, right? It's like, who do I want to serve? And how do I want to serve them? And how is this going to serve me? Those are all important questions in my opinion. And so we did this kind of like this soul searching, we individually answered like five or six questions and, and we almost call it like the top moments of our lives. And we look back on our life and said, what were those top moments? And what was the, the, the um, thread that came, uh, you know, that came across all those moments? And something we both found was that we love inspiring people and we love being inspired. And podcasting does both of those things, right? As we interview people, you inspire the people listening and you're also getting fed yourself. You're also being inspired by the people we have the privilege to, to interview. Women just starting out and Kim Kiyosaki, women on, you know, flip or flop, like, all, you know, all the spectrum of women we get a chance to interview. So, uh, so that's how we came upon a podcast. And that's why we started with a podcast without a community, without really um, anything. We launched our name and launched a podcast within the same month, four years ago. Hello, it's Matt here. Imagine for a second that you have your own podcast. It attracts your ideal clients, connects you with freaking cool people like Liz, and you're no longer the best kept secret. If you want that, but you're not sure where to start, come and join us in the Pod Rocket Academy for free. Our courses and guides make it easy for you to start a podcast you're proud of. You can get your free membership at proudmouth.com forward slash episode 367. You know, I don't think people who haven't podcasted or who haven't really moved to interviewing people really truly understand the gift that it is. Right. I, I mean, I have an opportunity to meet unbelievably cool people like you who are unbelievably successful and way smarter than I'll ever be. And it's fascinating for me to have the opportunity to pick your brain and learn a little bit more now. So the podcast came first, but then you built a community. How did you do that? Because a lot of our listeners really want to build a community, like a real fan base for who they are and what they do. Uh, but a lot of them, it's like a big swing and a miss and they don't really know where to start. So if you were going to give people an idea on where to start, what would you say? you have to get crystal clear on who do you want to serve and, 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 and why do you want to serve them? Then the how to serve them is, is the third question, right? People often ask the question, how, you know, which strategy to do, which, which, you know, outlet, if you will. And that's just not the first question I would ask. So we were really clear on who we wanted to serve. We wanted to serve women who were either professional, they're working full-time, they're stay-at-home moms, you know, they're in the age range of, age range of, of 30 to 60 ish, um, they were women who were completely overwhelmed doing everything themselves, highly successful, but they were doing it by themselves. They either had a growing portfolio, they had a few investment properties that were growing their portfolio, or they're starting out and they're shifting careers. It was, it was all those few things. And so we, we thought about that woman and said, you know, we want to serve that woman. And we wanted to serve women like ourselves, quite honestly, you know, <laughs> people don't, people often think like they want to serve these people and who are my customers? Our customers were ourselves. 
So it was really easy to ask the question, how do we best serve them? What do you think they might need? Now it's evolved, right? And we have to kind of do our due diligence, of course. So, you know, who do you want to serve? We knew we wanted to serve busy, overwhelmed women who were like awesome rock stars, but just needed more support and needed a place to go uh, to give and get support. As we said, okay, what's the best way to do that? And we started with a Facebook community. And, um, you know, we really, and we really fiercely guarded that Facebook community because, you know, there's Facebook groups, you know, people post a bunch of random. I mean, we have like, Andres and I fiercely, we have moderators, we have people helping us obviously now, but we still are fiercely guarding that Facebook community. And we have, you know, 12,000 women in that Facebook group now, you know, four years later. And so that is, was the first part of the online community building, you know, women giving support, getting support, um, people just giving information without a, uh, I don't know, they want to get something in return. It was that kind of environment, right? That's what we wanted to cultivate. And, um, and then that led to us to do a meetup. We're like, this is great, but let's do something in person, right? There's nothing about, there's nothing else, you know, that you can replicate where you can get people in person and especially women. And so we started with our first meetup in Philadelphia and said, you know, let's get women together you know, and we will have, um, this is not a chit chat. This is, we'll have an agenda women speaking, you know, even if the goal is to build relationships, at least there's a focus. Women have a lot to coordinate to get away for an evening. So the last thing you want to do is waste their time. Right. And we don't have time to waste. So that's started there. And when women in the Facebook group would be like, Hey, I love what you're doing. I want an invest her meetup. And we're like, well, physically we can't get to Nebraska, you know, cause of the way we think. Right. So we had women, um, starting them. We started a process and we have a meetup team now. Um, I was leading all of our meetups for many years for, for the first few years. Now we have 54 meetups. So we have a growth plan and our goal is to have a meetup in every geographical area of the world. So women can jump into a meetup, meet like-minded women, give and get support. And that's completely community building. That was a net gain. It was no, uh, not meant to create a revenue stream. Uh, we've had ideas on how we might be able to do that to serve women better but it really started as just a pure community building. Well, so that's fascinating. When we were prepping for the call today, one of the things that I had uh, really liked about you uh, in in something that I think we're kindred spirits in is this idea of serving, right? When you serve, other things end up happening. If that is the way that you focus, your focus is to serve these women, provide them with support. Revenue might happen later, but that's not normal, Liz, and you know that, right? <laughs> Most people are like, no, I need the income now. Yeah. I want to have an income model. You have a service model doesn't that seem backwards to you or, or how are you cool with the fact that you're putting in all of this time and you're giving everybody this resource, these resources and the support without getting anything tangible uh, on the back end? Yeah. And the first time you monetize and we, we would have people saying, you're crazy. Why aren't you monetizing? Why aren't you making money with this community? And, and, and I'm just, and I were really committed to just organically growing and listening and engaging. And that's how communities grow. They don't grow by like, yeah, yes, it is a business, right? And when we started, we didn't know if it was going to be a business. We knew it was our passion. We knew we wanted to serve women. And we quite honestly had a hunch that other women needed this. And honestly, we didn't know how many women. We didn't know if we like real estate invest her. Just go to the regular meetups. Why do we need this? Honestly, to be perfectly frank, we, we thought women needed it. We know we needed it, but you never really know, <laughs> to be perfectly frank. I didn't know what it would have taken off the way it, it did. And, 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 and so- so when you start to see energy flowing somewhere, you're like, okay, this is a business too. Now I'm a social worker, right? But I'm also an entrepreneur and so is Andressa. And so, and there's nothing dirty about that. There's nothing wrong with that. You're adding value to people's lives. You should get rightly compensated. It, it, there's, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing, right? In our, our capitalistic world. Um, but I do have that service-minded approach as a social worker. So, and, and, and Andressa the same way, we're super passionate about this. We, we see what we're doing as a social responsibility. It's not a business to like, you know, pay, pay bills. This is a social responsibility. So the next generation of women can see women in, in roles of leadership and in finance and financial independence. So they don't have to stay in a relationship four years longer with their spouse, which happens all the time because there's financial decisions being made, right? Or an abusive relationship or make the long list, quite honestly. But I know your question was about um, monetizing and we started monetizing we charged the first time for our virtual summit the year of COVID. So COVID happened and we said, okay, let's do a virtual summit. And I think we charged $49 for that. And I, you would have thought we were asking for 
a million dollars. It felt so awkward. We're like, oh my God, is anyone going to pay this? And then the first 10 people bought tickets. We're like, awesome. And then we ended up having like 200 people there. And, and that, that opened up this whole uh, conference, yearly conference. And we had our second one. And now we're having actually our first in-person in June, Invest Her Con. So it's exciting, right? It's a whole new level. But I think, and then there's other opportunities, right? Women ask about different things. And we're like, okay, let's create a membership, you know? And, and what does that look like? And what can we do differently than that's out there? And that's how we've monetized and creating affiliates, sponsorships, partnerships with companies. And, and it has, has to align. I have to say this too, Matt, it has to align with our mission, right? It has to align with the vision of what you, you hold. Um, you can make money in, in all types of ways, but it has to align and it has to feel right and it has to serve the women. And, I, and I'm we're very conscious of that, especially from a business development perspective, right? Is this going to serve the women that we're looking to serve? If the answer is no, I don't care how much it is. Even joining Bigger Pockets podcast, right? It's a great opportunity for us, bigger platform. Our downloads will probably triple or, or, you know, we knew those things could happen, but is this going to help the women we're serving? And that was a question we had to answer before we said yes. And I think that's an important question to answer. So mission sounds to me like that's something that's so vital. That really is your North Star. What is your mission? To empower women to live a financially free and balanced life. See, you know what? First off, I knew you were going to pull that out like that. Right? I say it every day. I say it on our yeah, podcast. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and so I absolutely love that. But the other thing, the other reason why I like that so much, it's clear, it's short, and it's succinct, right? That is who you are, what you do, and why you do it, right? That's awesome. And that's what a good real mission for the organization should be. Um, now, so you've created this community. Let, oh, so, so you use the word organically. So I have to challenge you on organically because uh, there's still intentionality with organic Correct. growth. That's true. So how were you intentionally organic growing this community, especially the one, not just the listeners for your podcast, because this is all kind of, uh, you know, all working together, but how did you get 12,000 people with intention through organic marketing in your Facebook group? It's a great question. So, you know, I think something we did was one, we, you have to talk about what you do, right? So, and you could talk about it in your local community online, but we were also real estate investors, right? We're active in the business. We're active in different circles. So, you know, that helped, right? It wasn't like we were kind of brand new to investing or brand new to this space. Um, so that, you know, talking about what you're doing, going to different kind of vertical, uh, you know, vertical kind of places that you can kind of share what you're up to, uh, you know, virtually, in person is helpful because you're gonna expand your brand that way. Now, our next focus is really women in the space of finance and, and trying to partner with them and because we're all kind of after the same thing. Um, so yeah, we started with that space. The the other thing we did in the Facebook community would be, as we're talking to women, be like, you know, share this with the women in your life. If this is helping you, share it. And we were never overt about it. It wasn't like every day, but it, we, it, would, it organically happened because the women getting support would be like, this is a really safe space for me. Same thing with meetup. They'll see, you know, they'll go to a meetup and had a friend in another part of the state. And, and then we refer, they, they recommend us. And in the Facebook community, the meetups in the Facebook community were really nicely together, right? So we're sharing what we're up to. Hey, we're looking for a new meetup leader and X, Y, and Z in the Facebook community. So as I, I'm a big fan of creating a Facebook community that stands, uh, you know, on its own and is, is, is of high value is a protected group, if you will. Um, you know, we fiercely ask people questions, you know, and if we sneak out, they're just looking to promote something. Um, we don't let anyone promote anything. You can recommend someone else, but you cannot promote yourself. That's a rule in our Facebook group. And we've never like, we'll pounce on it. We'll take things down our, you know, so that's the other piece of it. I think the organic part is staying on mission, staying true to what you're up to sharing what you're up to. And, and, and certainly asking people to share it, but in a way that is natural and works and is not like forces people to do it. Um, and people find us, right? A hundred women uh, join our, our Facebook group a week, you know, so people are finding us. And so, um, you know, it all kind of adds to each other. Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> you just like done so much there. I want to unpack. Um but so there is a lot there. And I, I kind of want everybody to just pause for a minute and just really collect the thoughts as I'm positioning this next question. But 
you said, and I hear it in your voice, and I know our listeners hear it in their voice or in your voice. There is a level of pride. There is a level of excitement. There is a level of joy that this brings to you. So when you are asking for referrals or when you are asking for people to join, it's not coming across as what can I do to get you in this car today? It's I want to help more people help me help you help them. I don't think a lot of people get that, that that's what works in marketing today. This high pressure, what can I do? You know, sell, 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 always be closing. That's not the world that really works functionally, especially if you're trying to build a tribe, which you have built. You built a tribe that has a service mindset that is there to do good work for the right people. Um, do you feel that? And if you, since you do feel that, I, I think you do. You do yeah, you, yeah, 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 all right, you feel it. How do you help other people embrace that pride and be okay with it and be happy and proud of what they do. So they are going to tell everybody about it. What, what would you say to our listeners who might not be there? Yeah. It's more than I feel it. I am it. Right. So, so th this is more than a business. It's a, it's a passion. It's a, it's a movement. Again, I, I, you know, and just, and I talk as we prepare for our conference and we, we believe that we're on a, a, we have a social responsibility to do what we're doing. Right. So it's well beyond just like trying to, to make a ca cash flow or, you know, to, to, to sell a membership. Right. Um, so, and, and I don't mean that lightly because for me, and I'll say this to the listeners too, this, be, this came at a point where I tried a few different things. I love real estate. I do like investing, but it was like a six out of 10, nine, you know, seven out of 10 passion level for me. Um, I loved consulting. I did it for a decade as we were building our own business. I loved helping people. I was, I was facilitating. I was coaching. I was at the top of my game when I left. I love that. Again, seven out of 10. And so, and then I started a few different things uh, that didn't work, you know, and when real estate investor came around, it literally brought all of my, like, all of my kind of trajectory of my life together into one thing. So, so when I say I don't feel it, I am it is because this has brought together my, my mission, you know, and I get emotional talking about it because it's a very personal thing. And I don't think people go deep enough to know what that is for them. Right. They don't, they don't, they're just filling in time. What well, life is short. <laughs> you know, I'm, I just hit 44, you know, and life is short. Life is not getting, it's not, it's not extending. It's getting shortened. So life is short. And I, and we all say that we hear that, but for me, as I had children, I did different things, corporate, we built a business. I was really clear. If I'm going to spend time building something, I want to build something that I'm, I'm, I'm super passionate about. And I believe in so hard, wholeheartedly, um, whether we make a dime of this or we don't now it's a business. So it has to make money, right? There's a whole other element of that, but I do believe that. So for the people that are in our tribe and our community, they have the same passion and like they'll protect the real estate investor and invest her just as much as we do. So it's not just Liz and Andressa, which is cool, right? Our meetup leaders and women just been in our community. And um, it's neat because they'll be like, we, they'll use the word we, they'll use the word um, us, you know, they'll identify very quickly with our, our, our brand um, because it's, it's very authentic and transparent. And, and I feel like we are, very true to what we're doing. So it's neat to see that even when women have kind of, you know, said negative things and they do, um, about what we're doing or what have you, right. It's, listen, that happens and not everyone's going to love us or believe what we're doing is even necessary. And, um, I've seen other women jump in and defend it as though it's their mission. It's their community. And it is. Andres and I were very intentional when we started to Matt. And I think people need to really get clear, we said, we do not want to be the thought, only thought leaders of this community. We, we know a lot about real estate investing, but I am, don't know everything. I'm not like the world's greatest real estate investor. I'm not. Do I know a lot about different things? Sure. So does she. So we, we, we envisioned a circle and that's why our conference is a circle. And that's why we're very committed to circles <laughs> is because you, if you think of a circle, it's all, it's everyone, right? It's not like the two people here and then everyone listening. Andres and I had this conversation at one of our first meetings talking about this community. We said, we want to build a circle. We do not want to be the only experts. It's not about us. It's not like the Liz and Andres show. Yes, we're the leaders of it. Sure. But we're not the only leaders of it. And there's mentors that know 
bunch more things than we do. And that's great. And that's the kind of community we wanted to build. Um, I, you know, and, and I don't know if everyone has that. You have to put your ego aside. Um, so that's also part of it. But that's that's the key. Oh, my gosh. I, I mean, I, I wish I could go back. And uh, when I was a, did behavioral psychology, one of the things that I would do is I'd have a little piece of paper and I would tick mark when somebody would say a word or did a behavior that I was trying to track. And I wish I could have just ticked the amount of times you said we and us. And everybody who's listening to this, if you truly want to build a tribe, if you truly want to build a community, it has to be we and us. It can't be me and I. People don't want that. They want to feel a part of something. Do there have to, does there have to be leadership? Absolutely. But if you listen, if you went back and rewound that by two minutes and listen to how many times Liz just used an other focused word to describe the community, what they built, what they're working for, who they're serving, why they're serving. That is one of the biggest issues that I have found, right? Is it's all me, me, me in these things, especially when it comes to the world of wealth and money and, oh, well, that person's more successful. So therefore I want to follow them. The people who really have the most followers are the ones who take that light and shine it back on them and say, this is your brilliance. What can we do to help your brilliance? And, and Liz, man, I just heard that so much in everything that you said there. So thank you very much for that. That is a lesson I think all of our listeners really need to know. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, absolutely. And it, it is a, it is an us in a way, um, because as soon as it comes to, is this right for me or, or I, you know, it's a limiting answer. I think it's an important answer though, as an entrepreneur, we, you know, as we were building the community and building a business, you do have to ask the question, what's right for the community, what's right for the women that are serving what, and also what's right for, uh, for us is, is, is the, uh, having a role. And so even when we started to grow, one of us really needed to take the reins as like, you know, the CEO of our, of our company, if you will. And, and Andres and I, as, as, as co-founders, right, it's like you're looking at each other, right? It's like you too when you start. And so, you know, we really said, okay, what, what's a better fit, both on personality, skills, and experience, and also what's going to be right for them you know, and we, we came to that. So Andressa really took the lead as, as the CEO. And I have a role and I have a very active role, but I, I, I'm not running our day-to-day -day operations. And so, you know, I think that's also part of this is it all has to, I think it's, I think a win, a true win is the service of a mission, the service of the people it's serving. And it's also the people that are leading too, right? So if I'm killing myself or I'm not true to myself, how, how, I mean, our, our mission is to empower me to live a financially free and balanced life. How, how great would that be if, if I'm just not, I'm living an unbalanced life? Like that would be pretty screwed up. Now, is every day balanced? No. While, while I'm talking with you, you know, my, someone's picking up my, my kiddo from dance. My husband's helping my son with his homework, you know, and I'm not focused on them. I'm focused on this. So, you know, balance is all relative, right? So. There's a great video that I just saw. Um, there's a woman who, who is a writer. Her name is she actually it's called Shonda Land. Uh, and it's a team of writers. And she's this writer who's written like every major blockbuster television show. Her latest one is Bridgerton, right? And um, she was talking about balance. And one of the things that she said was people don't understand what balance actually means because balance doesn't mean you have it all. Balance means that you have a community around you that supports you to allow to allow you to do the things that allow you to be great. But that means that you have to not be great at other things and you have to be okay with that. And Liz, you just said that, right? Uh, there are, when, when you have to be hyper-focused, you, you know, you're not attending this, you're not doing this. And I think that that conversation surrounding balance uh, isn't being had enough. People say, I want it all. Okay, so one of a wise person once told me, Matt, for everything you want in life, you have to be willing to give up something proportionate to that want. And to this day, that is one of those things that just, you know, okay, well, I want this. So I got to give up something to want this. Now, that doesn't mean it's forever. Like, for instance, you're still going to probably hang out with your kids, right? You might help with the homework at some point, right? Um, but right now, in this point of time, I am giving this up in order to get this. Um, and we have to give ourselves, I believe we have to give ourselves permission. But I have to go back to something right out of the gate. So I teed you up for that. I asked you what you thought about that. And you put your, your interests as an entrepreneur, because you're fiercely entrepreneurial, third in line when it came to who's most important. 
right? So you talked about the individual woman, then you talked about the community, then you talked about your guys' needs. That is so wonderful to hear because again, your consistency of focus and message is one of the reasons why you have such a strong following. And for those people who are listening to this, where did you put yourself in that? Was it the end client first, the community second, and then you third? No, most of you are putting yourselves first. And I think that that's where you become incredibly misguided, very self-centered, and you're not truly serving the people that you want. Now, if you could give, Liz, anybody who's listening to the show, so we generally work, as you know, with independent financial advisors um, who are trying to increase their influence. And you have achieved a level of influence. I would truly call you an influencer in the real estate world. And not just that, but the, the female entrepreneurial world, right? You are truly an influencer. If you could go back and do maybe one thing and make a little tweak to maybe have accelerated this or to feel like you were more successful quicker, what, what would you have done? Stop doing everything myself. I mean, I, yeah. I grew up in a, in a family that was, I mean, hard, hard working, hard work ethic was something that was literally ingrained in my, in my DNA. And I know how to, I mean, I can, I can work all nighters. I mean, I can just work my tail off and I'm good at it, you know? And and so, but I don't want to be good at it anymore. You know, as you get older, you're like, this isn't smart, right? I don't have to do everything. So I think when my husband and I first started our business, we were doing everything and, and we needed to do everything, right? Even just hiring that first bookkeeper was scary. And like, um, I was a horrible bookkeeper. And then I missed a mortgage and my husband's like, I think it's time to hire a bookkeeper, Liz. You're getting fired from this job. I was like, no, I could figure it out. Meanwhile, it's just not my skill set, right? I know this. And we know these things, you know, it's like people are pretty smart actually. But I think what happens, Matt, is we don't take the time to have just some quiet time for ourselves on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis and really ask the tough questions of like, what's working? What's not working? You know, what, what do I need to do differently to, to have the lifestyle that I really want? And so if I asked some thought provoking questions earlier on and stopped working so hard, probably the answers would have come quicker and I would have made some different, I would have made changes earlier, but I do appreciate people. And, and, and as we've grown our team and we're still growing our team now, even with invest her for the first hundred episodes, Andressa and I did everything. She edited everything and I did all the show notes. And, and so now we have a team who's helping us, which took us, you know, we're, we're a little thick headed. We takes a long time to, for us to figure that out or used to at least. Um, so I think I would have done that differently. I would have probably hired people faster. Um, and, and so the decisions we're making now, right. As we grow our own team and company, it, I'm, I'm, we're trying to make those same mistakes. Um, but I think being a hard worker could sometimes get in, in our way, especially women, because we do it all ourselves. And then we, and then we wonder why we're just dragging and not happy or, or feeling balanced. It's we're in our own way and we need to stop and really get connected to that. And, uh, I have a weekly kind of meeting with myself in the morning on Friday mornings, I sit on my little table. I like to do like a spiritual prayer in the morning and meditate. And then I ask what's working, what's not working for me right now. And I just see what comes up, you know, especially as an entrepreneur. And I think we need to give ourselves that space. It's like going to the gym. No one's going to come and drag you. Well, there are personal trainers who do that now, but no one's going to give you quiet time. I actually, that is probably a business now, but no one's going to like wake you up and go, go have your quiet time. You have to do that. It's the most important things in life come from internal and uh, that's sacred time now. I, I value it. I, I used to get up and just get into my day. So. so for everything you want in life, you have to be willing to give up something proportionate to that want. There are five things that you can give up, right? Time, talent, treasures, relationships, and control. And I think that time is one of those things. And you said it, you know, time, we're not getting any more of it, man. Every day we're on this planet, we have less of it, Right. Uh, relationships, which is either, you know, the right relationships, as you said earlier, you know, you're empowering women to be able to get out of relationships and not necessarily have to be financially tied to a relationship or an environment that is not beneficial to them. Right. Um, control. That's where most of us fall down. Right. Uh, we, we just, we, it's, you know, I know I'm going to do it. Uh, so therefore I am going to do it. Whereas, you know, there's probably somebody out there who's smarter, faster, better, 
stronger than you uh, and having that ability to have that reflection to be able to get rid of it. But I love the time reflection component. Um, and you're forcing me now to think about, you know, Matt, when's the last time you did that? Um, and, and it is not frequent enough, right? Um, as entrepreneurs, we all know uh, that that time is a huge asset that we need to be controlled uh, surrounding. But when you give yourself the space, in fact, I'm going to digress for a moment. I was just talking to a lady about my interview style. And one of the things that, that I like to do is space, right? So I do it naturally when I'm interviewing people. I give them space. I give them the environment, hopefully, to share. But I need to be doing that better. And I think a lot of our listeners need to be doing that better. So, Liz, that, that's awesome. Now, uh, my favorite question to ask uh, in the whole podcast is, what should I have asked you that I didn't? Hmm. I like that question. What should I have asked you that you, that I, that I, that you didn't ask me? Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I think the biggest learn lesson, I think what, what has helped, because we have had a lot of challenges in our investing business that I didn't speak to. Um, literally money stolen from us, like a mini Bernie Madoff, like stealing a hat, like three quarters of a million dollars of us and our investors' money two weeks before closing, getting sued. I mean, I can make the long list, like really tough situations. And I'd say, I think the piece that we often overlook, we're looking for that secret recipe. You know, we're looking for that secret, you know, um, what do these people have that I don't? And honestly, just not giving up is really, really important. I'd say that's probably one of the most important things that has helped us through our own journey. So I can, you know, we have created some success in a, in a growing profitable real estate business so that I can step away because I was doing a bunch of things in that business to really focus on my passion, right? And where my God-given talents have led me, right? Had that all not happened that way, I don't know if I'd be doing Invest Her right now, you know? And, and honestly, and I'm very fortunate, I feel very grateful that that I can and, and spend this energy where I am and being home with my kids and having a balance. So I guess that, you know, we underestimate not giving up, but honestly, like in 16 years of a lot of tough things happening, if we had given up, I wouldn't be sitting here talking with you. And so it seems simple, but it's probably really hard. And I'm not saying keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. I'm not saying that because that's just insanity and stupidity, right? We know that. I've done that plenty of times. And I'm like, why am I not getting a different result? That's not the advice I'm giving. I'm giving more so like, you know, to, to really move through challenging times, to have that context of not giving up, staying true to, to moving, moving the needle, if you will, and then adapting. What's working? What's not? What's working? What's not? What are other people doing? What, what can I do? What's my, what's my true passion? Just constantly, I mean, I've literally psychoanalyzed myself, right? Throughout many years, which is when sometimes you go crazy, but in a good way, right? And so I'd say that's what you didn't ask me. And what's that been that thread that's helped us get through some challenging times? Because it's not all roses. I talk about those things on our podcast. I talk about mistakes I've made. I talk about the stuff I'm working through now, right? As a leader. And uh, I'm not perfect. I'm far from it you know, quite honestly, but I am on the road of just trying different things and being authentic and sharing that with others. Cause I think that's real, uh, quite honestly. And I, it's how I like to learn from people versus like, uh, oh, wow, they, they've made it. And there's no one that's made anything. <laughs> we're all on a journey. <laughs> and we say that all the time, you know, with the women in our communities that we're just on this journey with you. Um, and we're dealing with different things, right? So all right. If somebody wants to reach out and find out more about you, follow you, listen to your show, we're going to have a whole bunch of links in the show notes. But what? But if somebody wants to engage you in any way, shape or form, number one, who should it be? And number two, how can they do it? Yeah. So obviously, you know, and, and I, there are a lot of men who like our podcast, you know, and there's a lot of men who support our community and they're allies to our community. So I always welcome uh, you know, engaging with, with, uh, with men, obviously, and, and, and adore them. So I certainly don't want to say only women, but obviously our, our mission is to support women. And, but I always invite men to be uh, knowledgeable about our community and our, our movement because they're, they're part of the, the, the solution as well. But the real estate invest her her.com is a great place to start. Um, you can get a link for our podcast, our Facebook community, our meetups. Um, we also have our invest her con coming up. So if there's a woman in your life or you are a woman who's at any point intrigued about investing in real estate, especially in these crazy times, uh, whether it's a vacation rental or, you know, uh, retirement planning, or it's just like, you know, you watch those shows on HGTV and you've always wanted 
to invest, or you have some investments and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna take this to a new level. What well, we're uh, holding a conference just for that purpose, uh, June 23rd and 24th. And uh, it's gonna be really a transformational experience for women. That's our goal. Uh, and it's two days and it's gonna be in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So you can learn more about that at our website. Uh, in you know the real estate invest her.com. And we will again make uh, sure that all of those uh, links are in the show notes. Uh, so Liz Faircroft, th- th- thank you so much. Uh, it- it's absolutely fantastic to know you as a human being. Thank you for being so mission driven. Thank you for being so focused. And thank you for providing our audience with absolutely fantastic information, how to build a community, why you started a podcast, and really how to live your life with intention and balance. So Liz, thanks for being on the show. Matt, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. All, it. all right, everybody. Well, if you have not subscribed yet, I don't know what you're doing. Just dear God, hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you haven't shared this podcast with anybody, this is a great one to share, right? If you are a person who really truly wants to learn how to build a community, I think this could be the episode that you need to be paying attention to because there's all sorts of wonderful nuggets that Liz gave us today to help you not only be the best you you can be, but also to help other people be their best them. Uh, and finally, um, if you have not joined our Pod Rocket Academy, Listen, everybody, it's free. Okay, that's just the thing. It's freaking free. Just join the Academy. You want to learn how to be more influential and stop being the best kept secret in your area. We built the Academy for you. Go to podrocketacademy.com and find out more. So for Liz Faircloth, all of the wonderful people involved in her organization and all of us here at Proudmouth, this is Matt Haller, and we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Thanks for listening to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. If you want to know more about how you can be your own loud, visit us at proudmouth.com and sign up for the Pod Rocket Academy. Through courses and office hours led by professional podcast producers and digital marketers, you will learn everything you need to know to become the trusted subject matter expert you were meant to be.